Are you looking for hope? Are you wanting motivation for the next step? Or do you need a change in your thinking? Join Pastor Hewlett Pearson for Monday Morning Empowerment on Gospel Live 365 Radio every Monday at 9 a.m. Central, 10 a.m. Eastern. If you're not empowered after her session, you can have your old thoughts back. Good morning and welcome to Monday Morning Empowerment, a time where we motivate and challenge you to live your life with purpose and authenticity. Let's join Hewlett for today's session. Welcome to Monday Morning Empowerment. I want to say a special shout out to GL365 Radio, who are a great set of people who listen to us all over the world. Thank you, Douglas Bramwell, for making that possible. Blessings, blessings, blessings to you. Again, God bless you for being here, everyone. I thank you for joining me on this journey of empowering um, the people of God and those who are um, going to be joining our our ex- so amazing kingdom that God has created for the, for his body to mature and impact our world monumentally. So we welcome you. Um, on the topic today, our topic is grounded. Yes, grounded. Uh, maybe some of you have been grounded before. I know I was when I was a child. I was reflecting this morning and I said, have I ever been grounded? And I do remember being grounded. See, my parents were, were uh, persons who who spanked us. And we didn't get spanking often because we didn't like it. So we tried our best not to do anything that would get us a spanking. And then when we got older, my parents started, uh, you know, we call it <laughs> as kids, corporal punishment. But it was ground being grounded. And I remember when I was in, um, I was in ninth or 10th grade history class. And in the second advisory, grading advisory, I got a deficiency notice, you all. Yes, I got a deficiency notice. I was shocked. It was mailed home to my parents. My mother did not like it. I was surprised that I got it. My teacher did not tell me that I was not doing well. And so what I did... I was so upset. I was angry. I was angry at my mom. I was angry at my teacher, um, especially my teacher, because I loved that teacher. And I wondered why she didn't make it known to me that I wasn't doing well. And so my mom grounded me. Yes, she grounded me. There, every year, we as young people look forward to going to our church conventions. Yes, we look forward to, to being a part of our, our, our church um, gatherings because all the churches of that particular de- denomination would come together and we um as young people would love to see our friends who haven't seen all year they were from new york massachusetts canada you know florida north carolina all over so this was a great time and my mom knew that it was a wonderful time for me and so that was such a huge grounding i could not go and i did not go and uh, I, I never forgot that. So, so that was so emotionally uh, draining for me. And not even emotionally draining, but just tough. But that's not the grounded I want to talk to you about. I know if for me, it felt like my world was falling apart. It was the most horrible thing that could ever happen to me. But the grounded I want to talk to you about is the grounded that allows you to see and come to the realization if you've not before and to come to the truth of the knowledge of Jesus Christ that you yes you who are listening you who are watching right now and will watch later God says I want you to know that you are grounded you are grounded you're not in trouble you've not done anything that you know, would upset the apple cart. No, God wanted me to encourage us on this morning that you have what it takes to go through whatever it is that you are facing right now. And you have the power of the most high resided on the inside of you. The word of God tells us that greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. And I want you to know that God is saying to us today, you are a person who he trusts with the word of life you are a person who he trusts with his love his compassion his peace 
I'm telling you, God wanted me to really strengthen us this morning to let us know we are grounded. And when I look that terminology up, grounded in the Greek, it means stable. It means firmly established. We need to realize just how much growth has taken place in our lives. Sometimes the enemy brings circumstances around us to make us think that we're not growing, we're not maturing, we're not being built up, our roots aren't going deeper, but God wanted me to tell you today that you are growing. God wanted me to let you know today that you are firmly settled in Him, you are firmly established, and you are stable. Yes, things happen, but you are stable. You are still here. You are still wanting to trust Him. You are still wanting not to give up. And so in Colossians 1 verse 22 to 23, the Word of God says, and I think, yeah, this is the New Living Translation. It says, yet now He, He meaning Jesus, has reconciled you to Himself. Okay? And in his physical body, in the physical body of Christ, as a result, this is what you are. I'm telling you, this is what the word of the Lord for us in this season right now. Because I believe God is bringing us to another level of accountability, another level of uh responsibility, another level of blessing, and another level of influence. He says, as a result, he has brought you to, into his own presence. We didn't bring ourselves into his presence. He brought us into his presence. His son, Jesus Christ, and Holy Spirit drew us to him. He says, and you are holy and blameless as you stand before him without a single fault. This was Paul talking to the Colossians brethren and the Lord gave me this word for us you are blameless once you you cannot be condemned you cannot I'm telling you you cannot be condemned why because Romans says this there's therefore now no condemnation no one can condemn you no one not even the enemy of our souls no one can condemn you only God can judge you yes the body of Christ is here to help bring things into order and to, to, to enliven us and to enrich us and to correct us in different areas of our lives. But God says, as it, res as, as it regards to your soul, no one can condemn you. None. He said, there's therefore now no condemnation to them who are in Christ Jesus. I know we tend to take the verse a little bit further. Um, those who are um, walk in the spirit and not after the flesh. That was not a part of the original text. That was added. Okay? Because it depended on works. God says, you being in me, you not being condemned is not a result of any works. It's because of the blood of my son that you accepted and you were drawn by us that makes you such. And so he says, you are blameless as you stand before him without a single fault. But you must continue. This is Paul saying, this is who you are. And he's encouraging us in the word of God today. But you must continue to believe this truth. The truth of what? That you are brought into the presence of God. Not only that, you are holy and blameless. He said, and you must now continue to believe this truth and stand firmly grounded. He says, you ought to stand grounded. Know who you are. Know who brought you to the kingdom at such a time as this. Know that you are loved. Know that you are sanctified by the washing of the word. Every time you and I read the word of God, it washes our soul. We may not even feel the washing, but the word of God says our spirit is renewed by the word of God. Even you hearing the word of God right now, there's a washing that's taking place. There's a cleansing that taking, that's taking place. There's a, an acknowledgement of who you are are in God that's taking place. So he says, don't drift away from the assurance. You've got to believe this beyond a shadow of a doubt that you are grounded in Christ Jesus. You have depth to you. Yes, yes. You're not a shallow saint. You're not a shallow believer. You are grounded in Christ. He said, don't drift away from the assurance you received when you heard the good news of the gospel. No, don't drift away from that. That word you heard that helped to pull you in the direction of where God wanted you to be to accept his son as Jesus Christ, his son as the one who came to save your sins. God says you have been equipped 
to go deeper. Oh my Lord. You have been equipped to stand firm. You have been equipped to be fully and firmly established. So it said the good news has been preached all over the world. And he says, I Paul, I'm a servant to proclaim it. Grounded. Yes. Yes. This may seem like a simple one word topic, but it carries weight. You must believe that you are grounded. If you've been praying, if you've spent time in meditation on God's word, if you have fasted, if you have sung hymns, if you have uh, expressed testimonies to others, if you have uh, reflected on his goodness, there is growth there. If you have been continuing in your walk with him, there is growth there. You are grounded. So I, I, I reflected, as I was reflecting, there is a psalm that we learned, my, my brothers and I, when we were kids. And it's Psalms 1. I'm going to read the first part to you in King James Version, and then I'm going to go to the, the Passion Version for first three. It says, Blessed is the man. And when it says man, it means mankind. Blessed are you who walk not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor sitteth in the seat, uh, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. But his delight, yes, you, you the grounded one, you the firmly established one, your delight is in the law of the Lord. Yes, the, 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 the precept, the statutes of the Lord. And in his law, you meditate day and night. You think well upon your God. You think highly upon your God. And because you do, this is who you are. I'm going to read it. I'm going to say it in the King James Version and read it in the Passion Version. So because... You haven't sat in the seat of the scornful, but your delight is in the law of the Lord. And in his law that you meditate day and night. He says, and he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bringeth forth its fruit in its season. His leaf also shall not perish and whatsoever he doeth will prosper. There are benefits to being rooted and grounded. There are benefits for being firmly established in God. Let me read it in the Try, um, passion translation to you. It says here, he will be. You know, it says, blessed is the man. It says, uh, after he says, blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor sitteth, standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful, but his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in its law does he meditate day and night. He said, he will be standing firm like a flourishing tree. Planted by God's design, deeply rooted by the brooks of bliss. Oh my goodness. Bearing fruit in every season of his life. He is never dry, never fainting, ever blessed, ever prosperous. Yes, that's you. Yes, that is me. Yes, you are firmly grounded. Stop thinking that you keep messing up. Stop thinking that you don't measure up. Stop thinking that God is upset at you and you not matured. God is saying that you are the blessed one and you're standing firm like a flourishing tree planted by the rivers of water. When a tree is planted by the water, it gets all the nutrient. It could be hot and, and dry outside and just blazingly uncomfortable, but because that tree is planted by the resource of its life, my God, hallelujah. God planted you. You didn't plant yourself. God planted you. And so he is making sure that you are firmly grounded. So guess what? Sometimes he allows situations that are adverse to us to help keep us grounded, to help us remind us of his love for us. Paul, I think it was in Ephesians, he says, you must, uh, in faith, be firmly grounded in God through faith. So every time you believe God, every time you trust him, not for things, but for the relationship you have with him, you trust him that you are growing. You're trusting him. every time you pray, every time you, you pick up the word of the Lord, there's another level of groundedness or if there's such a word, but you're being deeply rooted. Yes. He says you're planted by God and you're planted by God's design. You're deeply rooted by the brooks of bliss. Oh my goodness. Bearing fruit in every season. Your leaves are not going to wither. 
And whatsoever you do, it's going to grow. It's going to prosper. You may not see it prospering now to the level that you want it, but God says there's a season that I am bringing you to where you will begin to bud, where you, oh, bless your name, where you begin to flourish, where you begin to see my hand in your life that I was always there. When you begin to walk in that anointing in a greater level, when you begin to walk in that anointing with signs following, God is saying, I am sending you this word so you can continue to stay firmly grounded and rooted and not be sidetracked you're deeply rooted he says so you're gonna bring forth life you you're never dry why because you're planted by God by the river he is our source he, he planted us in him he says you're never fainting you're ever blessed and you're ever prosperous. You may look at your life and say, "How am I prosperous?" Life is not does not um uh, is not contingent on the amount of money you have in the bank. Being prosperous says that your mind is clear. You haven't lost your mind. You're still serving God. You're still living. You may not have all the money in the bank that you you want, but you're still prosperous. Why? Because you are rooted and grounded in Him. So that's what God is saying to us today. Don't make your mind vacillate. Am I in? Am I out? Is he with me or is he not? Am I going to be able to grow? Am I growing? God is saying to you today, you are grounded. So because you are grounded, it is now time, even more than ever, for us to walk that out in faith. When, when the angel of the Lord looked at Gideon in the, in the Old Testament in Judges, he looked at him and said, O oh, thou mighty man of valor. Some of you all are listening right now thinking, is she talking to me? I haven't been doing all I'm supposed to be doing. God says, stop beating up on yourself. Stop demeaning yourself. Grip yourself. Pull yourself up. Come together in your mind. And see and know that you are grounded in God. And now walk it out. Gideon says, who you talking to? Me? You calling me a mighty man of valor? Really? First of all, that's not me. Secondly, my tribe, I come from the least of the tribes. The angel of the Lord saluted him and told him who he was. And he couldn't receive it. Receive this word today. That's who you are. God is saying you are grounded. It wasn't long after Gideon walked out. Oh, glory to God. What the angel of the Lord, the salutation the angel of the Lord greeted him with. He won the war against the Midianites. Someone who was busy thrashing wheat in a wine press. Hadn't picked up a sword or a shield. Hadn't attacked the enemy. But was able to, by God communicating with him and, and allowing him to walk out the word of life that was spoken to him. God is saying to you today, you are grounded. So how did I get grounded, you're saying? How did we become grounded? Sometimes we got we became grounded, as I said, by reading the word, fasting, praying, meditating, spending time with the Lord, just blessing his name, the worship, the lifestyle. And also we get grounded by some of the experiences we've been through. David in the word of the Lord says, it was good that I was afflicted, that I may know your way. Not your hand when you keep giving me things, but your way, your statutes, your, your precepts, the way you, th you, you think about me, the way you love me, the, 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 the blessings that you've given me, the way you've been guiding me. David says, I learn now that you are a loving God. Basically, he was saying, I learn now that you are a God that requires holiness. I now know that you are a God that loves your creation. It was good that I was afflicted, David said. So I may learn your way. So part of learning that we are grounded is through the experiences in life. We learn that God is with us. We praise him when he, he brings us out of trouble. We praise him when he covers us when we're going through trouble. And he promised never to leave us nor forsake us. He says, I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. Psalms 91, I think that's verse 15. You are grounded in God. So because you are grounded in God, 
Whatever experiences that you have gone through, God is saying, I'm with you. And let me tell you, stay grounded. Why, why should I stay grounded, you're asking? You may be asking. Because you love the Lord and he loves you. Stay grounded. Stay grounded and staying grounded means you're not going to be gullible to the tactics and the, and the, and the uh, little tricks of the enemy. Staying grounded means you are focused minded. You are focused on your purpose. Staying grounded means the kingdom needs you. Staying grounded means you are impactful. And staying grounded means you carry the very presence of the Almighty God. Yes, we are the house where the Holy Spirit resides and works through and can uh, impact our surroundings and give us influence even in areas and places where we've never been before. We are grounded and the Lord wants us to know today, walk that out. Walk it out with confidence. Even if you've made a mistake, repent and walk out being grounded. Life throws things at us, but God covers us and he keeps us. I pray you were, a, you were blessed, hallelujah, by this word. I pray that you will know beyond a shadow of a doubt that you have been called to the kingdom of God for such a time as this. This is your season. He is really calling forth his saints to be and do more. The world is acting crazy, but you're not because you're grounded. You're firmly rooted in God. No one, the word of God says, shall pluck us out of his hand because we're grounded. You are in his hand and you will not abandon the hope that is in you. You will not give in to the tactics and the tricks of the enemy. You are now enlightened even further to walk the distance, to take the journey, and to do so with your head up and in confidence. Because God says you are grounded. You are rooted and planted in him, and you will bring forth fruit in your season, and whatsoever you will do, shall that's not a maybe he says shall prosper go forth and prosper in your god and the truth that he's able and the truth that you have been called to do greater and be greater god bless you love you and enjoy the rest of your day and the rest of your week and i'll see you again this time next week god's willing bye bye